More than a thousand miles from his home state of Texas. We're all cowboy fans. Stuck with them wherever I go. Joe Rico, a decorated U.S. Navy veteran, has been stuck living in this unfamiliar place. Five years ago, a judge deported him from the U.S. to Mexico. I got deported from on my home, America, from my mom, everybody, everybody's over there. His deportation was triggered by a conviction on drug charges, which he says stemmed from his struggles with addiction after he returned home from war. Went through some depression, got in trouble, and I even asked the judge, are you really gonna deport a veteran? And he's like, well, I thank you for your service, but says you gotta go. His greatest support is back home in Texas. His mother, Frances Garcia, and she's devastated. Me. Dreaming of the day when she might be able to embrace her son again. And now Joe is about to get his chance to return home. I'm ready to go back home. My mom, she's waiting for me. It's been a long time. Joe is just one of hundreds, maybe thousands of veterans who feel they were unfairly deported to their birth countries for various crimes. Since the Revolutionary War, non-U.S. citizens have been allowed to serve in the U.S. military. Today, more than 32,000 of them are enlisted, many of them lured by an enticing incentive. If they serve in the U.S. military, they might get American citizenship. When Joe was just four years old, he came to Texas from Mexico with his family. Why were they coming here? Uh, for the American dream. Uh, better, better life. Your dad wanted a better life for the family. My mom, my mom. She's she since they went. How would uh, you describe Francis? Beautiful, uh, best mom in the world. Joe had legal permanent resident status, but wasn't a U.S. citizen. When September 11th happened, he decided to enlist, spurred on not only by the prospect of citizenship, but by an urgent sense of patriotism. What was your heart telling you? Sign up. Sign up. Sign up, step up, and I did. Joe was deployed twice in the Iraq War. And while you were there protecting the United States, how did that feel? I feel good. I feel like I was doing something. And like uh, you were giving back? I'm proud, giving back, make myself proud. I loved it, I miss it. He wanted to become a U.S. citizen, but he says trying to navigate the process and the paperwork while serving was difficult. Wasn't there a time that you could have requested full citizenship and maybe have prevented the deportation? I did. I sent, I, I sent out a package, whole fingerprints, uh, picture IDs, everything. And I have a whole package. And nothing became of it? Nothing became of it. It got lost in the system. Joe says he never followed up. After he was honorably discharged, he went to college, bought a house. But he says he also started to struggle with his mental health. He believes he suffered from PTSD, though was never formally diagnosed. If you hadn't had it, do you think you would have turned to drugs? No, I don't think so. I was doing great until that part of my life came in. To cope, Joe says he started using methamphetamine and eventually started selling it to support his addiction. He served five years in prison on the drug convictions. Now you understand you broke the law. I so. broke the law. Yeah, I understood the whole did the crime, do the time thing, but getting deported, it's like getting punished twice. I'm still paying for it. In his fight to get back home, Joe started working with Robert Vivar, who runs an advocacy group helping deported veterans with paperwork and access to legal services. It is pretty common for that situation to have occurred where they actually applied for citizenship and never followed them through. Non-U.S. citizens serving in the military have long been subject to deportation for violent crimes like murder. But deportations like Joe's for non-violent crimes have increased since 1997, after the Clinton administration passed the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act. It created a category called aggravated felony, where any conviction of more than one year carried automatic deportation. On top of that, it took away discretion that an immigration judge could use when addressing an issue of a veteran in removal proceedings. 
A 2019 report by the Government Accountability Office found that many deported veterans' convictions were drug-related and that Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, policy requires the agency to take additional steps to proceed before a veteran is deported, but that ICE did not consistently follow its policies and did not consistently identify and track such veterans. It's been a hard road my whole life. Like Joe Rico, U.S. Marine and Iraq War veteran Edwin Salgado was deported to Mexico after a drug conviction. He also did not have U.S. citizenship at the time. Uh, I missed my, my, uh, my appointment for the fingerprints because I was deployed. He says he was diagnosed with PTSD after his deployment. But the VA hospital that he'd like to receive treatment from is across the border a world away, as long as Edwin is barred from entering the U.S. PTSD is bad. Um, I've come close to um, suicide a few times. But I don't want to do that, you know. But sometimes it's just those thoughts just come to your mind and, you know, you just want it all to shut down, you know. In the seven years he's been in Mexico, Edwin has created a new life south of the border with a wife and daughter. My goal is just to be happy. That's it. That's the other thing I want. I just want to have access to the U.S. I want to be able to go to the VA to get treatment. He also found a sort of therapy in art, helping create this mural along the Tijuana, California border. The upside down flag is a sign, uh, so we're in distress, we need help. We're willing to die for the country, and as soon as we're not needed anymore, uh, we're just discarded, you know. At least 75 deported veterans have returned to the U.S. since 2022. That's when the Biden administration launched an initiative providing a pathway back to the U.S. and halting future deportations. It's not legislation, so it could change at any time. We need legislation to be passed. For years, U.S. Congressman Mark Takano has been trying to pass that legislation. Deporting veterans, uh, people who've served our nation, have put their lives on the line, there's something wrong with that. As the ranking member of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, today he introduced his fourth bill on the issue with bipartisan support. We aim to prevent deportations of veterans um, by making sure that non-citizen veterans become citizens. And we uh, mandate a number of steps uh, that the Department of Defense has to take to make that happen. His bill would also create a process for a veteran's military service to be considered before deportation. Your Republican peers who voted down your previous bills have said that they believed it would open a path for criminals to stay in the country, and that it creates additional carve-outs to an already broken immigration system. Your response to those criticisms? We do not defend at all uh, heinous, serious crimes. Murder, crimes against children. We do say that if, there is a, if anyone deserves a second chance, mm -hmm. it is a veteran, somebody who's worn the uniform in the United States. Yeah. It is a travesty to me that these folks who have been deported can get back into the country in a coffin uh, to be buried in National Cemetery. They can be guaranteed the right to be brought back into this country if only they're dead. Only they're, they're dead. That's right. Back in Mexico, Joe Rico has been in drug rehab, recovering from his addiction. I'm just happy that I get to go home tomorrow. I don't want to miss all of you. I love you guys. It's very healing for me. I love you it. sober now? Sober now. No cravings. Uh, I love it. How many nights have you cried? Okay, I lost count. What brings the tears? My mom. Your mom? My mom. How many times I let her down? But in May, due to Biden's initiative, Joe finally received the news he was waiting for for so long. His request to return to the U.S. had been approved. I keep thinking uh, I'm going to get a call and something's wrong is going to happen or I don't know. I'm just ready to go home. 
accompanied by his partner Sonia Jimenez and fellow deported veteran Edwin Salgado. The walk to the immigration checkpoint filled with bittersweet goodbyes. All right, bro. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Joyous reunions greet them on the American side in San Isidro. You, you look good. Thank you for choosing to fly with us today. But the journey back home is far from over, high above the clouds with hours to go before landing back in Texas. There's only one person on Joe's mind. A mother's love, no words needed. How do you feel to have your son back? You never gave up hope, nunca se rindió. No. Dios es muy grande. When you felt abandoned by everybody else, she was there. She's still there. She went to feed you. <laughs> Joe Rico is finally back home, but he could be sent back to Mexico at a moment's notice. Right now, I am in a year parole. Which means you have to watch I, everything. Everything, you. which I have no problem with. Mm. I told him I would wear the GPS, I would call in every day if I have to, uh, whatever it took. He is that determined to remain in the only home he's really ever known. What do you want more than anything right now? Become a citizen, uh, get a job and start a new life. Because in your heart, you're American. American. Yes, sir. Our thanks to John. If you or someone you know is struggling with a mental health crisis, free confidential help is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Call or text the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.